Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I'm going to show you how to create a unique and interesting background that utilizes clear primed wood. So this background can be applied to all kinds of different subject matter but I'm going to show you how I put a bird on it. So if you've got a few minutes let's go check it out. Today I'm going to show you uh, how I create an underpainting and a unique background for uh, the that serves as the roadmap for my collage process. Um, this is probably the all-time uh, most famous piece of my work, and it is the piece that has really uh, gotten me uh, well known. Um, in the world of art and it was reproduced by Pier One Imports and they had uh, it was their number one best-selling piece of wall art and they sold it for at least 10 years. You might even still be able to get it on their website. The stores I think are all closed now but I do believe that there is still a Pier One Imports.com but either way it is called the Hope Robin. Um, that was my title for it was Hope because it was actually one of a series of three paintings. It was a triptych. Uh, this was the nesting male. Then there was the nest with the eggs and then there was a female sitting on the eggs. But Pier One only ever licensed this one image and they uh, retitled it Curious Bird. So if you Google Curious Bird, Pier 1 print or whatever, and every now and then someone emails me a photo of it where they've seen it hanging in a doctor's office or a rental property or a restaurant, uh, it shows up in a lot of places. So my printer did not do a very good job with the color reproduction of this, but this is what Curious Bird uh, artwork looks like. But if you look, look it up, Google it on your computer, you'll see that it's the color is way more vibrant than my printer. So... Um, this piece being so popular and being so instrumental in my, uh, my, the beginning years of my success, I wanted to share with you how I created the background and the underpainting. Um, I had a couple of Patreon, uh, supporters, uh, ask me about how to create the background. So I'm going to make this a multi-part, uh, video process from, from this stage all the way through collage for my Patreon subscribers. But, uh, as a tutorial tidbit, I'm just going to show you the background and the underpainting. And if you are interested in, uh, becoming a patron or learning more about my Patreon page, uh, click in the upper right-hand corner of your video for more information. So, this is a, uh, a two inch deep cradled wood panel, so it can hang uh, without uh, need of framing. And uh, typically I finish the edges uh, by wrapping the art around the edges or doing the background treatment on the edges or painting them a solid color, any one of the above. So I have primed this board with a product uh, called by Liquitex, which is called Clear Gesso. So you can see that you still see the wood, you see the wood grain and the wood color because it's been primed with clear gesso. So clear gesso gives it a bit of a tooth as well. So it's good for drawing on uh, because it'll accept the pencil really nicely. So uh, you know you can never reproduce something exactly. So I'm gonna do my best um, to, to reproduce this background, but I will talk you through the steps uh, that I take to create the background and you just have to play with it to see what kind of a results you're gonna get. Even I can always reproduce what I've done uh, in the past. So, um, so it's primed with clear gesso and I have set up my um, Masterson Stay Wet palette with all the colors that I feel like I need for this. Um, I am going to follow the colors of the original piece. So the first thing that I do is I want to make this watery wash that's around the outside that serves as sort of a shadow to set him off from the lighter background. And then you can see that there's some splatters of the watery dark color and also a few splatters of an off-white color. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a, a nice fluffy big brush and this is slightly bent so it's not necessarily good for painting but it'll be good for sort of... Um, adding a little water around here and sort of getting it uh, wet in just sort of a watery shape around the bird. And this is going to dry fast, so we'll, we'll work quickly, but that'll give us sort of a, 
a means of the paint to sort of travel and be nice and wet and watery edge. So the color that I think that I used primarily in this was a Van Dyke Brown, which is very dark. Um, so I can either water it way down or I'm going to actually this time put a little metallic um, uh, bronze, fluid acrylic metallic bronze in that. So it's going to have a little sparkle that it didn't have in the original. So I'm going to do a little bronze and a lot of water and see what I get. Now I've got a paper towel ready to go. So if it gets too dark or gets out of control, I can dab it off. So here we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna with a wet brush, go back into that water that I put on and I'm gonna get even more water and I'm just gonna be loose. I'm gonna move quickly and be loose with this wash that goes around the silhouette of this bird. So I'm going to pull a little bit more bronze in there. I can get it a little bit more metallic. And you want to create an interesting shape with this, not just, tr not just following the edge of the bird uh, exactly, but um, sort of creating an, an interesting shape. So that got a little dark there, but I can I can dry my brush and pull up the paint with a thirsty brush. So that's uh, when it's real watery like that, that's um, an easy way to pick it up. So I'm gonna add a little more water and I think that'll do. So the other thing that you can do is you can come in with your paper towel and if you think you've gone out, out too far, um, I came out a little further. But like I said, I'm not going to try to reproduce the other one exactly, but you can dab off if you think it get, got too dark or you want to bring it in a little from the edges, you can dab it off a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit more copper. You have to be careful with metallic because they're an opaque color, um, which means you don't see through them like you do with the Van Dyke Brown fluid acrylic. And I don't want it to be too heavy or block out the wood grain on here. But I just thought the copper was kind of a neat, a neat addition. And I'm going to add water to blend any edges that are hard because I want them to be soft. And again, I can come in with my paper towel and pick up anything that I feel like went out too far or even to soften edges. All right. So you don't want to overwork this. Um, in this one, it just really looks, uh, loose and just quick. So that's what you want to do. So then you can see that the splatters that ended up in the wet area, they, they bleed because they're wet. And then the splatters that are out here, because it's dry, they stay more tight and controlled. If you want them to be tight and controlled in the wet area, then all you need to do is let it dry. But the variety of splatter is kind of interesting so and when you splatter you need to clear your area of anything that you don't want to get splatter on because splatter goes much farther than you think the best way to try and control splatter is to tap the brush that you're using to splatter against an, a pencil or another brush rather than just you know flinging it like a sword and having it go everywhere if you tap it you can control it a little bit more so we're going to use the same color basically maybe a little bit darker than we used for the for the um, first layer and we're going to tap. So you can see the ones that hit the dry are staying very concise and tight. And the same thing with the splatter. If you get too much on there and you feel like you want to take it off, you just hit it with that paper towel. So I have I have more wet than uh, on this one. Uh, so my splatters are bleeding out a little bit more. Um, I have a few more concise ones on the, on the print that I'm looking at. But again, I can let this all dry and I can add some more. But I do like the way that they bleed out and get soft. So I'm going to let that dry a little bit. And I'll come back in and do a few more splatters for concise. And then I'll put the, the lighter white splatters on. So in the meantime, I'm going to take another brush and start doing the underpainting. Now I do an acrylic underpainting underneath all of my collage work because it is the roadmap for the collage application on top. So I work out my colors, my shading or my values, 
and my composition and everything first with a painting and then glue collage paper on top. So I'm, I've got a really kind of rather small brush here, but I'm going to um, put in, I'm going to start with the orange uh, belly and I'm going to pay attention to the shading that I established on, on my, uh, my original and I'm lighter here and a little bit lighter there and then sort of darker down the middle and then darker underneath here. So I'm going to grab some yellow and bleed that into the orange right on the board and just pull that down here and being mindful of that lighter left-hand side. So bring that down into this shape. And I noted that it was also a little bit lighter on the right side, but it's, it's not as light as the left side. So this is where I'm paying attention to shading. I'm paying attention to values. What is light and what is dark? And I'm establishing that with the painting so that when I come back in with the collage paper, I have a roadmap and a guide as to what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, red underneath here in this underneath shadow area. Now this clear gesso has a lot of tooth, so it'll tend to wanna tear up your paintbrush. So um, just be mindful of that. It's, uh, it wears, a, wears out the bristles. So maybe don't use your most expensive paintbrush when you're doing this process. So I'm gonna um, put a little bit of Van Dyke Brown in that red. I'm just gonna bring it in and kind of blend it in. Whoops, there's my copper. Blend it in right here on the board so that I can sort of darken this red down a little bit more. Make it a little darker. And try to keep that shape. All right, so coming back into the orange, it's darker down the middle. And just for the purpose of saying, do as I say, not as I do, this is one of my nicer brushes. And I'm using it on this gritty surface, so. So let's blend that yellow in and let's bring that orange over a little bit more. So this is the part where I'm paying close attention to shading and values. And then we're getting darker down here where it meets the red. He's got a little white on him here, but that is something that appeared on my collage paper. Uh, it was white on the orange collage paper. So I'm not going to try and get it exact because some of this fun stuff happens with the collage paper, but I've got my roadmap here. I've got my lights and my darks. Um, I'm going to grab a little bit more yellow paint. I'm using uh, dairy lied yellow, which is kind of a, a golden, golden yellow. Okay, so we'll pull that and we'll do a little here. I lost my, actually there's a wing over there that's a dark color. So handy to have your reference photo to realize that I painted that out and it needs to be dark. So then I'm going to come up into the Van Dyke Brown. Now I'll reestablish that wing. And there's a wing on this side. And above that is a little bit of darker red. So I'm gonna sort of add that in. And then the tail. And I'm gonna mix a little navy blue in with that brown just for fun. And then what else is dark brown? The top of his head. So all the while I'm doing this, I'm letting that background dry so that we can add some more splatter. So I'm putting, trying to give him a little fluff on the top of his head. And then down below the sticks in his beak.
then in his eyes is also dark and the only thing that's separating them from the rest of his head are those little white lines around his eyes. And then we've got the light area under the beak. That feathers out into the orange at the bottom. So I'm going to drag some orange into that to remind myself that that's going to feather out at the bottom. Then the sticks that are in his mouth, I'm not going to try to paint these all in specific colors. That's what I usually call freeform collage. So when I get into the collaging, I really don't need as much of a guide for these sticks. And we can, um, we can really have fun with the sticks with the collage paper. So I'm just gonna be real loose with that. We'll do just whatever colors I have on my palette. So I've got some green here and some magenta. And I just wanna make sure that I have the general shape of it. So some of them went up some of them went out, some of them went down. So now I'm gonna take the corner of this flat brush with a little bit of white on it and try to establish the light around that eye. And if I mess it up, I can always come back in with the brown. This one's bigger than the other one. It's kind of that way in the painting. So there we go. And then we have to put the beak in, which I, he didn't really have a yellow beak. It was sort of a light brown. So I'm do a little Van Dyke with a little Naples yellow that's on my palette. Again, it'll be my paper that determines the color, but for the point and purpose of the underpainting, I wanna make sure that I show it the right value. And it's a medium value. It's darker than the white stripe, but lighter than the top of the head. So I'm establishing that and the shape of it. And then I'm going to take a little white because there was a few white sticks in here. So I want to put that in there just to remind myself that I want to have a few very light ones so that I have a full range of values so that they're not all medium. And yellow is good for that too. Okay, so we've got that established. And now we got to come down underneath here and that is sort of the same color is the beak really a little bit of a light brown all right and then the legs his little legs orange or orangey brown I want to make sure that stays a medium value. So it's lighter than the dark red that's coming underneath and it's lighter than the legs. All right, so I think that's a pretty good road map. Let's check the edge of this right here. Bring that out a little bit and bring this little red part up a little higher. That's sort of splitting hairs, but now I've got my underpainting. So I've got my uh, values and colors established and the background is feeling a little uh, dry. So we're gonna go back in with that splatter now and get some more defined splatters on top of this background. I'm gonna keep my paper towels so that I can dab them off of him. It doesn't really matter if they get on him because we're gonna color cover him with collage paper anyway, but if you feel like they're in the way visually, you can dab them off anywhere that they end up that you don't want them. So we're gonna use a little less water that will also make the splatter stay crisp, a little less water and tap against that paintbrush. So I'm going a little darker and a little less water so that they show up. There we go.
so that's the dark splatter. And I did have a little bit of light splatter. I managed to keep it off the bird for the most part. There's just a few there, a couple. So if you get overzealous with your splatter and you think, oh gosh, that's way too much, you know, come in with the paper towel around the tip of your finger and just, you know, come and eliminate them one at a time. Or if you get a cluster of them where they all come together and form a great big splatter, you can come in and just press with a clean towel on your finger and eliminate some of them or even lighten some of them up. So you can come in and tweak your splatter as long as you work while it's wet. Take it off the bird. Evaluate if you think it's too much. Um, it's kind of fun. It's more, it's more than I have on this, um, but I like it. And like I said, you can never replicate any piece of art that you've done exactly, especially probably 15 years later or however long it's been. So I'm going to soften some of the ones in here. They're a little dark and I'm gonna tone back a few of the light ones. And this is just me tweaking. If you take off too many, you can come back and put some more on. Um, so there you have it. So now I have uh, the Hope Robin underpainting, one of my, probably my most famous piece ever. Um, he was always eight by eight inches because it makes him an actual life size, but the Pier 1 print was 18 inches wide or maybe even 20. So he was Godzilla Robin, but people loved him anyway. So, um, so that is the splatter watery wash background on a clear gessoed wood panel and the underpainting roadmap for collage with paying very close detail to lights, mediums, darks, deep darks, and bright lights. So again, this uh, will be a lesson on my Patreon page where I will, uh, once this is dry, I will do an in-depth uh, tutorial lesson on the collage application and how to create this little robin. So if you are interested in multi-part in-depth tutorial videos like that, check out my Patreon page. Uh, happy Friday, and thank you for being here.